City tonight, but we go to their big league affiliate, the St. Louis Cardinals, who fired their manager, Mike Matheny, last night after six seasons. His temporary replacement, this guy, Mike Schilt. Schilt was the bench coach for the Spikes all the way back in their inaugural year of 2006, and today picked up his first win as manager. The Cardinals saying today, interim, no more. Mike Schilt has been named the Cardinals field manager. Derek Gould, I believe, reporting earlier that it's a three-year deal. We don't have the terms, but here's an example of a guy in the organization for a long time. We saw it with Brian Snitker of the Braves. Gets a shot because the manager was sent packing, and suddenly, I believe, at the very least, Joel, looks very competent in what he is doing. Really, everything we could have hoped for has occurred team has certainly turned around and, and not just winning games, winning series, getting us back into the race. It's an exciting time to be watching the Cardinals. What a privilege and blessing it is to uh, be the field manager on a permanent basis moving forward for the St. Louis Cardinals. It's not something I take lightly and it's, a, it's something that I have gratitude for. When you factor in his career and who he's worked with, He's probably managed 90 to 95 percent of that clubhouse already, so you already have that respect and, and that relationship. You know, Shieldy's a guy that uh, he's, I don't think there's anyone better or more prepared than he is to, you know, for this job. Probably still not believing it, to be honest with you, to some degree. I mean, uh, talk about a surreal moment. You know, he just got through managing a game for the St. Louis Cardinals. You know, a kid from Star Mountain, Charlotte, North Carolina. Coached at West Charlotte High School, so, um, you know, very blessed and very appreciative of the organization opportunities I've been given. There's a verse in a poem that paints a picture of the man we are honoring. It tells us that impossible is just a word and determination is our action. The verse reads, The one who gives up with ease is a fool. The wise person labors with determination. Yet one must choose the things that one can do and go full steam ahead till comes success. In our youth, we are given the gift of believing nothing is impossible, so we dream. Then we step onto our very first road in a journey that we think will take us to our hopes. Not long after that first step, we find ourselves traveling another road, then another, and then another. When chasing our dreams, we feel as if we have taken a wrong turn, but we haven't. What we come to realize is that our compass was not set by us, but by life. Each road will require more steps than imaginable, yet the determined soul will continue to put one foot in front of the other in pursuit of the impossible. And when we stop to reflect our journey, we realize not one road, but many, has led to success. With age comes wisdom that tells us that it was not where we started or where we ended, but how special the in-between has been. Mike Schilt has canvassed a map that has been his journey in becoming a major league manager. Those who know Mike Schilt only as number eight or one of the 30 people in the world managing in the big leagues has omitted the core of this man. Yes, he is a member of the exclusive fraternity of St. Louis Cardinals managerial greats such as Miller Huggins, Branch Rickey, Frank Frisch, Red Shandies, Whitey Herzog, Joe Torre, and Tony La Russa, as well as being a disciple of the legendary Cardinal George Kissel. Those close to Mike are proud of his ascent and celebrated professional accomplishments, but we see beyond the uniform. We see a caring son, a sincere friend, a big heart, a fighter, a mentor, a brother in our game, and a genuinely special human being. Born in Charlotte, North Carolina to Merle and Lib Schilt, Star Clear Athletic Association was Mike's first step onto a road that the baseball world considers unconventional. His story's ending is not even close to being written. The question is, what road does someone who loved playing baseball but no longer had the option do? Is it the conventional road of 9 to 5 corporate America? Not a chance for someone who was born with a heart made of raw hide and seams. So the road to coaching and developing young players becomes his choice and direction. Mike found himself dreaming again on a new road to navigate. When looking back, we recognize our timeline of travel. For Mike Schilt, it was from Star Clear Athletic Association, to Crockett Park, to Olympic High School, to coaching on the high school and college levels, to scouting, to coaching in a pro uniform, to coordinate an entire spring training, to managing in the minor leagues, to the big leagues as an on-field coordinator, to an MLB third base coach, to an MLB bench coach, to the number one seat as the manager for one of the most storied franchises in baseball history, the St. Louis Cardinals. The game of baseball is not always kind. It has a way of humbling us. 
For those who endure the grind and humility will become lifetime students and stewards of the game. They recognize its life lessons and all its good, especially in people. So Mike, your family, your friends, and the You Deserve a Chance Foundation acknowledges all your encompassing spirit of the game and those people's lives you have touched. Michael, I am glad we're shooting a video uh, to express how we feel about things that you've done because um, the more I think about this, the, uh, the more emotional I get. Um, watching somebody that's like my brother from another mother, it's, uh, it's been more than special and more meaningful for more people than you realize. We weren't friends on the field. We competed hard. You played the game right. You've always respected the game of baseball and I appreciate that about you. Mike, I also think about your friendship and what you've provided for me. Uh, you've been an unbelievable leader for me and how to do things right. I think it starts with how to treat people. You truly know how to treat people. You know, Mike, one of the things that's, that's always uh, endeared me to you is, is the way you are a really good listener and, a, and a, an awesome communicator. I know that, that uh, in your time you've, you've sat back, but you've listened to people and you've taken it all in. And, and your ability to, to communicate is, is spectacular. I can remember the good fortune that we had is uh, the year that you were assistant coach with us out here at Country Day. And, and I know that our young men uh, benefited a great deal from just being around you. Not so much uh, the knowledge that you were able to, to pass on, but the type of person you are. The, and again, to use the term, you're, you're the world's greatest communicator and it's proven to be a very valuable uh, asset to you as you've grown on in, in baseball. Uh, to much of the baseball world, he, he probably looks like an unlikely candidate for Major League Baseball. And here's a guy who didn't play pro ball. He was, by his own admission, a mediocre high school player and college player at UNC Asheville. But he always had a passion for the game and a mind that was constantly working and trying to learn the game. Obviously, he was a guy that coached me at UNC Charlotte, was a big part of my success there and um, obviously continued to help me along the way even when I got to professional baseball. Just a guy that was always there for you, man. He was, he was always there to help and just a, a great mentor, obviously a great coach. Well, it's been 36 years since I left your mom's office and I walked down to the clubhouse and, and run into this toe-headed kid that just uh, is shining shoes, running for hot dogs, hanging uniforms, doing all those things. Um, and now here we are. Like I said, 36 years later, um, standing at this podium, older and gray and you're older and not so gray but uh, and I'm going to present you with the Spirit of the Game Award. This award has uh, represents not what we've done in the game but what we've done through the game and the things that you've done and the people you have touched warrants you receiving this award. What's interesting is a year ago even over a year ago we decided that uh, we wanted to present you with this award long before you were the third base coach, long before you were the interim coach, and certainly long before you were the manager of the St. Louis Cardinals. You know, it's, uh, it, was, it was decided because of what you've done in this community, what you've done for others through the game, um, through you being in uniform, through you being recognized as a baseball celebrity. Um, you know, the humility that you, you walk around with and, and the humility that you present on other people has just changed lives and for me this is a great night and a great opportunity to say thanks for your brotherhood thanks for your friendship thanks for your love and thanks for being you